Now we're going to rewrite these standard form equations into vertex form. Notice that these are in standard form, which means they're in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Now this form is nice for a lot of for a lot of things, but it's also not the most ideal form for other reasons. So there's several ways you can do this process, but the 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 most um, straightforward way and the way that is the most important for your future is called completing the square. We're going to complete the square and I'll tell you why it's called completing the square in a minute, but I'm just going to show you how you do that. So the way I like to do this is to take this thing and break it up a little bit like this. So see how I split up? I made a little extra space there because I'm going to add something and I'm also going to subtract that same something. Just hang with me. It's just a process you go through and you do it a few times and you'll get it. So I'm going to add half of this squared. What's half of negative 8? Negative 4. Negative 4. And what's negative 4 squared? Positive 16. Now remember that it was negative 4 because that's going to come in handy. And if I'm adding 16 here, I also have to subtract it. I can't just add something to some... I can't just add something randomly. But I can add it and subtract it. Couldn't I? Sure I could. So that's what I'm doing. So f of x equals that. Now watch what happens to this right here. This thing right here is a perfect square trinomial. It factors into x minus 4 squared. Remember I said remember that minus 4? That's always how that's going to factor. If you don't believe me, do it in your head or do it on paper real quick x minus 4 times x minus 4 is x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 minus 4 and minus 4 is negative 8, boom, done. The whole reason we picked 16 was because we knew it was going to factor that way. And now what's this right here? What's 3 minus 16? Negative 13. Done. There's your vertex form. What's your vertex? 4, comma, negative 13. That's how you go from standard form to vertex form. My mom's here. Thank you. So this isn't always that easy. Sometimes <laughs> it's a little bit harder. For example, this one right here. And it's harder because this isn't 1. A isn't 1. But it's not that big of a deal. All you have to do here. Again, what am I doing? I'm going to separate these out. But now I have to also factor out of here that 3. So this is 3 times x squared minus, what's 12 divided by 3? 4x. And now when I put the, when I'm adding something here, when I'm, whatever I'm adding here, I really have to do what? when I'm adding that. I'm, re I'm really going to have to subtract not just I'm not just subtracting the box because what am I really adding to the side? I'm really adding three of those. Right? So I have to subtract three of whatever I put inside that box. Make sense? So I'm going to put, what's again, let's do that process. What's half of negative 4? Negative 2 squared is positive 4. So if I'm putting a positive 4 there, I'm really adding 12, right? Because 3 times 4 is 12. So I also have to put the 4 here because now I'm subtracting that same thing. Now what happens to this right here? What did I cheat you? What's, how's that going to factor? It's going to be x minus what? 2 squared. How do I know it was minus 2? Because that's what I did. I put, I took half of this and squared it and put it there. And then what's negative 7? What's negative 3 times 4? Negative 12. What's negative 7 minus 12? Negative 19. There's my answer. What's my vertex? 2, negative 19. 2, negative 19. Done. So again, what, what is the whole point of completing the square? Let's go back and review this. The whole point of completing the square is it's taking an equation in standard form 
like ax squared plus bx plus c, and putting it into vertex form. And why would you want to do that? Because what's easier to find if it's in vertex form? The vertex. The vertex. <laughs> but not only the vertex. It's also easier to find the x-intercepts. It's not easier to find the y-intercepts. But look at how easy it is to find the x-intercepts. Remember, to find the x-intercepts, I plug 0 and 4, x, y, y, and I solve for x. So watch how easy this is if it's in vertex form. I'm going to add 13 to both sides, right? Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And don't forget, when you take the square root, you really have to take the plus or minus square root. See that? And so now what do I have to do to get x by itself? Add 4 to both sides. I'll put it over here. x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 13. Hey, guess what? There are your x-intercepts. And it also jives. It makes sense with the axis of symmetry because where is the axis of symmetry? If you know the vertex is 4, negative 13, what's the axis of symmetry? x equals 4. So if I think about my graph... Here's x equals 4 right there. That's the axis of symmetry right there. My vertex is down here. Let me erase and give me some room here. My vertex is going to be down, down here at negative, or 4, negative 13. It's going to be down there. And it's opening which way? It's opening up. What's the square root of 13 roughly? It's, let's see, it's between 3 and 4, right? Because it's, so it's going to be, so your graph is going to be going like this. One, two, three, four. Your graph is going to be like this. Why, how do I know that? Well, because where did I go? I started at four, my x-intercepts right here and here. I started at four and I went root 13 to the right. That's plus root 13. And root 13 to the left of my axis of symmetry, which is four. So... Finding the vert, uh, putting an equation in vertex form is more valuable than just finding the vertex. It also helps you more easily find the x-intercepts if they exist. Because remember, they don't have to exist. So let's try that on this one. Let's find the x-intercepts for this. The x-intercepts, let's see if I can squeeze it in over here. The x-intercepts are going to be, I'm going to do this all in my head. They're going to be plus or minus the square root of... 19 over 3. Let me rewrite that. The x-intercepts are going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of 19 over 3. You can even do all of that in your head when you get used to it. Because in my head, I'm just thinking to myself, move that to the left by adding 19. Divide by 3, so I've got 19 over 3. Take the square root, which is a plus or minus 19 squared to 19 over 3, and then add 2. You can do it all right in your head the, the more you do this. Now, you, some teachers will ask you to rationalize the denominator and stuff like that, but that's, that's your answer. It's 2 plus or minus the square root of 19 over 3. Those are your two x-intercepts. So if we wanted to graph it, your, your vertex is at 2, negative 19. It's like way down there. And... 19 over 3 is about 6 point something, so the square root of 6 point something is like 2 point something. So we're actually going to be on this side over here. We're going to be over here somewhere, because there's our axis of symmetry. And we're going to be over here somewhere. And your graph is going to look, which, which jives, because what's my, what's my y-intercept? Your standard form is easier for your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is just negative 7. There's negative 7 right there. My x-intercepts, my y-intercept, my vertex, everything I need.